All right, so uh, Greg Tickcomb, aka Old School Greg, has been running the Old School. I think what is it on Instagram? Old School MTG, Old School Magic on Instagram. For at this point, it's probably like it's probably approaching four years. He's literally never missed a day posting something. He has a beautiful collection. Posts absolutely gorgeous decks all the time. He's a brewer in his own right. He's brewed some real sweet stuff. He went through a, a diamond, actually traded him his fourth Diamond Valley. So he was, he's been in the middle of a Diamond Valley phase, which he is not playing right now. Um, his deck is extremely sweet. I'm not going to talk about it until... Hold on, I have to mute uh, you. I'm not going to talk about it until his opponent comes in to make sure... Wait, he's in here, right? Thomas Ashby. Let's see. Muting him. Simon, are we, um, is Thomas in? We are here, and we are live on this site, I do believe. Yes, now it's starting to look good. Okay. Thomas, oh, he can't hear me right now, hold on. Oh, yeah. Thomas, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear, yeah, you. I can hear you. Okay, I'm going to mute you in a second. Um, we'll, I'll give you guys a thumbs up when you can start, okay? Yeah, sounds that good. Sounds I'm good. Just gonna, I'm just going to get my camera going. Sure thing. All right. Um, mute myself. All right. So, getting back to the decks. For the viewers at home, we'll talk about Greg's deck first. He's on a pure burn deck. And it's really in its purest form. No creatures. It's just pure rug. He's not even splashing the black cards. He has four, four bolts, four chains, four side blasts, the beginning of any burn deck. He also has four fireballs. He also has one Storm Seeker and two Forks. And the coolest part of the deck is four Black Vices and three The Racks. So you pretty much need to have exactly four cards in your hand. Otherwise, you know, you're screwed against him. He has a Miser's Chain and four blue cards. Um, he also has a couple of main deck Hercules Recalls and um, a, a couple of main deck Sylvan Libraries. And that's basically it. also interesting. No mistress factories. Okay, we'll see how that plays itself out. Let's see what Thomas's deck is. Thomas, whoops. Oh, Thomas is on. These guys both won their first round. He's on a black white deck, kind of a dead guy ale ish deck in that it has swords and disenchants. It has a couple of Juzams, send gears, a Sarah. It has um four main deck sinkholes it has i think that's one main is that an alien open oh it's a jalem tome um he has a couple of main deck spirit links which feel like they're going to be huge game on a creature with four toughness here is a main deck greed he is splashing so he's splashing blue only for ancestral and recall it looks like he's not playing time walk which i'm sure is because maybe he doesn't own one because otherwise it's a no-brainer yeah. um and that's it. So I don't know. Given given how I just described these decks, Fanta, do you have any any inkling as to who's who's favorite here? I don't think I have, and that's kind of exciting in itself, right? Yeah. No. Exactly. I'm I'm not really sure either. I I probably need a few more minutes to think about it. What is that noise? I think that's the headphone problem we discussed earlier. Who's, who's it think, coming? I don't think it's my side, right? Can you hear me, buddy? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, is it better now? Uh, no problem. Okay, let's try again. Okay, I think we're probably okay now. Um. Okay, yeah. Let me know if it if it um if it if it pops up again. Yeah, no worries. Uh, let's see. Okay, so they're about so to start, is, and like we said, we don't, we really have no clue who's going to win. I think Greg's no deck specifically is super interesting. I'm not sure how much I love it from like an expectancy standpoint, but just the fact that he's playing racks and vices in the same deck is really sweet. Um, uh, he has no Atog to take advantage of any of that stuff. Uh, the fact that he's creatureless turns off a lot of cards in his opponent's decks, right? Like that's probably why he's not playing factories. He's like, fuck it. I don't want to have. You know, I don't, I don't even want to have their source of plowshares do anything. Um, the thing about factor is, is that you can always wait and try to find a spot where you can get him for something if they don't have it. 
Like they, they, they tap out for something, the the opportunity cost is so low just that you feature sometimes master. just get in. Like you play turn one factory, they play underground C. Watch Jet go and then you get in for free. Yeah. No, that's a great point. That's something that I, I wrestle with a lot in playing various red burn decks because you need a lot of colored mana to turn on your forks and whatnot. But the factories are so insanely powerful, even if you are playing creatureless, to get in the free chip here and there. Um, I think it's probably right to play them in just about every single deck. Um, but I think that's, my guess is that. I think there are three things you can say when you don't want to play factories. One is Underworld Dreams. And it's probably correct to play them there still, but like when you're playing dreams, you might want every land to produce black. So I could see cutting them. But then again, like dreams like love the chip damage, so they should probably be played anyway. Yeah. But then there are two two ways, like two decks that I actually don't want factories. The easiest one is Twiddle Vault. Yep. Because you're just not interested in anything of that. You don't want to block, you don't want to attack, you don't want to do chip damage or anything, you just wanna get blue mana and do broken stuff instead. And then there's there's land tax, in general like tax decks don't really want factories. Could see an argument for factories being okay anyway. Like you could like if they die, they might turn on the tax. But right. that, like the consensus is not running factories, at least. Well, it's okay. The, I, I guess the, it's okay. You tell them to start. They can start now, right? Oh yeah. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. You can start. Um. But yeah, I think um, well, I think the reason in land tax decks is that you just don't. There's no way to get enough colored mana to, to do to play all the broken cards, you know, with playing enough basics to make land tax good while also playing factories. Unless you play twenty nine mana sources. Like if you're playing that, um, like budget red white tax edge thing. Yeah. That probably play play factories. Right. Right. Like, Sometimes it's awkward with factory, but sometimes it isn't. So I think you can do that. So like any time when you're thinking, okay, maybe this deck shouldn't play factories, you probably yeah. should. I've been there. You know that I've been there a few times over the past few years. I try to get cute playing like Armageddon's and skipping factories just to but tell me. Armageddon never right. stuff. It doesn't matter. You want to play factories anyway. It's never right. Yeah. yeah. Except for in Twiddle Vault. That's the time that it's 100% right. Time. So and then again, I could see playing one factory as the win condition in Twin Vault. Exactly. It's kind of a free win count at the cost of a blue mana, which is it's not nothing, but it's yeah, not the end of the world. I think Fireball is probably the worst win count to, to main deck. Yeah. Well, clearly Brain Geyser is the correct one. Yeah, so like, like Greg, Greg had his dream start of Land Vice, which is about 5,000 times better than Land Rack. So he got there in the, in the variance early. But the last thing you see when you want when you play a turn one vice, the last thing you want to see is moxes out of your opponent, and that's exactly what Thomas had. Land in no other place. So there's still there's still six cards in the opponent's hand. All right, but you could have a disenchant now too. Oh, here's the silver one. Yeah. If you're expecting a disenchant, do you not play the silver? Uh I don't know. I I feel like in general, I I, I don't mind getting myself in disenchanted here. In here, I guess. Is that it? Yeah. That's like so right. good for. Me. Right, because you don't. He right. It's so good. He doesn't necessarily have disenchant. Right. It's clearly what he's representing. Yeah, but the point is that if he doesn't have disenchant, just getting two in in your mono burn deck seems so insanely good as well. Okay. So what is this? We have no idea. I think that's a him to two rock. Yeah. It's a him. Right. Great. Sweet. And it's a very beautiful one as well. It really is. I'm. I'm. That there, a lot of work clearly went into that altar. Then again, like him and somebody with a similar library in play, when you don't have any kind of pressure and they're on okay, two two bolts there is yeah. maybe not a great player because Greg is gonna pay some life here. I'm pretty sure. I think he's just playing the full eight, right? He's got to. Probably. I mean, who knows? Maybe if his time twister or something, but right. he doesn't do anything like that. It's probably. Seems like he's a patient man. He doesn't pay right. life. He might, maybe he just has wheel or something, you know? Land, land wheel is pretty good here. Huh. Probably like a side blast. He did play side blast, right? 
Right. He definitely plays four side blasts. Maybe he has side blast oh, and a draw oh, side win, and he's getting greedy. I don't know. It's interesting anyway. If you have Still side blast and a draw seven there, you clearly just play the draw seven, right? I'm not sure. Against because the only other card that is so this deck is so weird. He could just wait it out. No, but in this specific scenario, he has two cards in his hand. If you had Psy Blast and Draw Seven, would you play Draw Seven or would you get greedy and wait a turn? I think Knowing that you probably lose draw, the game to him. Try and draw Vice and stuff. And I'm going to like play Land Vice. Don't have to draw Mox for that. Right, but like, so now you lose, right? You lose to a discard spell. Uh, oh. okay. you still have a, you still have twenty life on a Sylvan. Right, so you can still, you know, ancestral this turn. Right, yeah. So maybe that's it, right? He doesn't wanna. He wants to just wait on that a little bit. Okay, factory here. But now he has to draw, doesn't he? It's a pretty good thing that he didn't draw, right? Because that mind twist would have gotten those last two cards. So. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Maybe that's just it. He w he's waiting for something to actually do with that as well. He's level. He's leveling us completely. Yeah, he just, leveling. Left, he just left it on top. It's perfect. Yeah, and Twister now, and then being on 20, being able to draw three next turn if something happens. Yep. And now he also has the land drop for, for any vice he might draw. Yep. Or any racks. You, you definitely don't... Um... Oh man, I lost my train of thought, but... Um... Yeah, like, the only problem now is that Thomas has decision in mana. Right, which is bad. It lets him get a hand card out of his hand to get under Vice. Lets him kill the Vice and or the Sylvan if he wants to. So like being on eleven card, eleven life against the pure burn deck, drawing seven cards here, no real clock. Right, like you would think. Right. Yeah, you would think kind of what's been going. Greg hasn't really done much at all, and yet he's still Thomas is still at eleven. And well, it's he's really able to pick the black Vice, which is just a dream if you're playing a Vice deck. So I mean. That is just where you want to be, right? And yeah, first turn fight is usually just like a free five on the play. Sorry, pass, and we're going to see a disenchant on the black vice. I would guess. Be advice, could yeah. be it could be on the silver. Just taking two anyway. That probably that feels that feels bad. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too anti silver. Silver now, though. Yeah. Tap six. So this is a five five. And I'm going to or four four, I mean. Oh my uh, god. Twice. Still. He has that still one in twenty life. Uh, so this could be a showcase. And he hasn't paid any of the life. He's really been using his life perfectly. This could be a showcase for the power of Sylvan Library. Oh, he got the wheel. And the ancestral. So we draw all these awesome colored cards and no mana to cast them. Oh my god. He didn't play Chaos Word. With the Sol Ring? That's a weird, yeah. That's a little weird. I mean, the the, the, the disenchant is good enough, right? You're just doing it anyway. Right. You, you'd you love him to, to disenchant your Chaos Orb there, I think. So. I mean, not love, but it, it should be out there. I'm pretty well, sure. Even he has disenchant, you're not, you're not too sad. Okay, that's still very patient. Uh, now, let's see, did he play, does he play Regrowth? Let's find out. Now I don't love his chances because... There's no draw sevens ticking around in this deck. And, and any anybody who's played old school knows these burn decks and these Atog decks are, are just all about the draw sevens. He does have a regrowth, so he has one legitimate out that he's drawing towards. Is he not splashing black? He's not splashing black. It's just mono, mono rug. Mm, okay. So yeah, it's it's so funny. Like that's I guess that's what Mind Twist does, but like Pre pre mind twist, I think Greg is a pretty good favorite, and now he's an enormous dog. That's how Sweeney the one card is. Another him to Torak for his last two cards. Uh, oh, this one says fam, and the other one probably says feast. I'm pretty sure he has some instant burn here because he paid to draw an extra card. Yeah, so both yep. bolt and side blast. That was well, that's seven. That puts him. I mean, that puts him at side blast range. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think Greg is behind. Very much at all. Like yeah. only what, even only a side blast would probably have been good enough to to like maybe not good enough, but you know good enough to make it very much a game. 
what's the probability that this this game comes down to Greg burning him out and Tom Thomas swordsing his own creature to gain life? I think it's very high. Good point. That's a good point. He still has the so one the problem, city. Though. Yeah. So the problem with being creatureless here and not having factories to draw the swords is that the swords will get pointed to to their own creatures, which is relevant when you're this kind Honestly, of attack. Trading a swords and a creature for four or five life isn't oh. the worst thing in the world against a chain lightning deck. You know. True. You get some True. real value out of it. But again, this is another, you know, these decks are not, I wouldn't call what these decks old school, you know, tier one staples, but playing various vice burn strategies, you know, is, is something that's commonly seen in old school and playing black, white, him, him, power card, dead guy, ale type of stuff is another kind of strategy you see, but maybe not as often as you see Lion to Bolt. Um, this is another, one more turn here. Right, he literally only has one because he paid, paid the eight, and that juggernaut hits real hard. Yep. And there's a factor as well. Yeah, but he's at he's at actual ten, right? So yep. the factory is kind of meaningless at this point. How good would a factory be here to block this juggernaut? You know. Sure. Yeah, I think um. I think that is um should have attacked with a factory as well. Probably. Yep. There's right. no great draw next to card. Doesn't matter that much, but like, it could definitely matter, right? Maybe he wants to save it so that he can pump up swords a pumped up factory in response to yeah, a removal. I think your swords your juggernaut and start to get more life. The factory in itself is well. If you attack in the factory, and then you then you certainly could, right? Because he'd be a lot lower. Yeah, exactly. Another. What did he play? Oh, a two drop. Okay. I played a Synco. Oh, but he got, he got a main range, so I was hoping he got another Another, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so it's, it's, is a fireball going to be enough here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fireball for eight Um, does not, it actually keeps him at exactly one life if he has a swords here. So fireball will not be enough. Oh, but he could pay? Yeah, a land fireball. He could pay four to land fireball. That'd be a perfect way to end this. Oh, my God. Let's hope that, but especially if Tom has that swords, that'd be lovely. How many cards does Thomas have? I feel like a bunch. You know, probably three or four. I'd love to see the rack here at some point. Thanks, you got you got game one. Good, good game, buddy. That's it, I think. You can see. Oh, no fireworks. There were so many potential fireworks there from both sides. Oh. So that was a that game was a testament to the power of Mind Twist. He literally Mind Twisted away two Chain Lightnings and then an entire grip of full-on brokenness. So let's, um, let's bring up their sideboards and see what they have going on. So, okay. Greg has a couple of Psychic Purges that are probably coming in. For sure. He also has creatures in his board, which are four dibs and three Urnum Gins, and it looks like a Goblin Flotilla. Of course, that's a perfect card to always yeah, traditional, play. Traditional sideboard one of, I've seen it a million times. Yeah. Um, he also has a couple of Winter Blasts, which seem very cool, and I, I would assume that he's on... Being hypnotic. Right, uh, and then you can also combine them to kill a Sarah or a Sengir, which he didn't really see much of yet. So right now, if you're in Greg's shoes, what are you putting? What are you putting? Uh, why do you play Winter Blast over Hurricane? What's that? Why do you play Winter Blast over Hurricane, for example? I don't really know. I mean, especially because he has no creatures that need to fight yeah. through, right? Because Winter Blast does tra tap creatures. It That's one tap reason. Damage to to flyers, right? That's what it does. It also taps the creatures, though. I know, yeah, yeah, but okay. So, like, um, if you didn't have enough mana to kill, you know, Sarahs, but you could pay three mana to tap two Sarahs or something, you know, okay. that doesn't really do anything in his deck that doesn't have creatures. Albeit, he does have some in his sideboard. Um, all right, so I guess he's just bringing in purges. I don't know if he's going to go the creature route here. Me neither. Like they're they're not trumping. 
almost this creature is that good. So I guess there's that. Right, but I, but it, so again, what I was getting at is, what do you, if you're on Greg, what do you put Thomas on? Because all you saw was him to Torok and and Juggernaut, basically. You know, disenchant, I guess. I mean, some kind of black white mid range with the hymns isn't that enough? Do you need to know very much more? Yeah, it's because you're, you're you're putting him on specters. You're putting him on probably orders swords. Um, he is specters. Is the thing no specters in the seven to five? That's one of the weird things here. Right, no specters, no orders. This is all. This is a. This is out of the Jamie Wakefield school of magic. You know, just a bunch of fatties, no weenies, no little guys. Um, fatties and fatties and removal. You know, that's the whole deck. So let's see what's in his sideboard. So it's it's kind of disruptive instead. Like the, the order curve is just sink coal and him instead, and then going into creatures. So it's sort of slower and more controlish like that. Yeah, I feel like these juggernauts these juggernauts are another budget concern because otherwise he has no boltable creatures either. If those juggernauts were were the, the third and fourth Juzam and maybe you know Ascendier or something, that would be a lot, a lot sweeter. The juggernauts are just I mean, despite how great they looked on camera there, they were they're just so medium in this matchup. You know, almost actively bad. Yeah, very much up. Um, so he has one cop red in his board. That seems pretty helpful. He has another uh, spirit link, uh, which I Spirit Link are pretty good as well. Right. Abyss, uh, obviously, Terror, Dreams, probably not, because he's, I mean, while he's dependent on the draw sevens, th those are for control matchups. So it's probably, I mean, it could be Diamond Valley, too. I think, I like Valley and Spirit yeah. Link and Succession Red and nothing else here. I think so, too, and you probably cut, like, Greed doesn't really seem very good here. There's one main deck, Greed. Sinkholes. <laughs> Not good, like ma maze and sword probably. Yeah, he might not know. He might uh, not know that Greg's on no creatures though, right? I could see him thinking that he has dibs or something. I could see him keeping in maze and a couple swords for for at least game two. Swords is pretty much more versatile here, so I could see him like hedging with that, but not maze. But I don't know. Yeah, I think greed clearly. It's very clearly he's on a heavy burn strategy, so greed has to go. Then you're right. I mean, sinkhole. It's probably between sinkhole swords, maze, and I don't know. Maybe J Jalen Tome's fine. Whatever. If it's in there for a reason, I'd probably keep it in. But I'd probably shave some number of those cards in addition to the greed for those three cards. Like that as well. Yes, I can see an argument for balance being bad here. If you know his creature less, but it probably isn't. That's a hard thing to do when commentating, right? Because we obviously are so biased. We can see the whole 75. I have some issues with that, you know, trying to pretend what it would be like to be in the shoes of the person just seeing the cards played. Um, I don't think there's a world in which he cuts balance, given he just he hasn't seen enough, right? You know, I can't. Especially when you're doing all the creatures yourself, when you usually have the biggest guy in play, then it's better, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, that's true. He also could end up hurting himself with balance if uh, if Greg gets some racks out. Although maybe those racks are going to be gone after this game for um, for the purges and. Um... Well, okay, I guess. I mean, I guess the rack is mostly there for real aggro decks or other burn decks and whatever. Right. Which really, um, their hands, I guess. It's also, so much worse on the draw. You know, so I think it's an easy cut here on the draw. Yeah, but he's only play. No, oh, I'm I'm sorry. I meant I apologize. I meant when Tom, when Thomas is on the draw. Obviously, Rack yeah is um is better if your opponent is playing right. But in this case, yeah, Rack, Rack is decidedly medium. I would imagine those are probably gone. He's bringing in two purges and you know maybe maybe some creatures. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't know what they're, go ahead. No, it's hard to say whether to go to for the creatures or not. Like dips are outclassed by singers. Okay, you didn't see any singers, but it's outclassed by that, for example. So you Agreed. probably don't want to hear, but, but you never know, right? And then Urnimjin, sometimes, I guess it'll always trade at the very least. And, and these black white decks generally have four fours in them. Uh, so the forest walk doesn't appear to be much of an issue here. Well, it's an issue against Magnot, I guess. All right, so that's kind of a dream start for Greg. First turn, Vice, Lotus, Serendib. We're gonna find out pretty quick whether uh, 
we're gonna, we're gonna say like a ritual singer or something. No. Just a. Uh, just a. Um, Thomas is only playing three moxes, so he's um. Yeah, but he has some ritual. Right, he has ritual. So he has six, he has seven different, including soul ring. He has eight ways to accelerate something. Yeah, like just and just playing. Just a spirit link here is huge, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to. I think he's considering spirit. No, he would have spirit linked it if he had it. So upkeep swords. Maybe. Yeah, no reason not to upkeep swords there. You're not playing around. I guess you could play around four spike, but yeah, I think that was kind of a hard, hard decision. I feel like oh. the one damage. Although he doesn't care that much about chippiness, so it feels like Greg's deck could, in theory, play four spike. Yeah, it's very weird. Well, you have know. to price in. You have to price in how terrible you would feel if you got that. Uh, first spike. Exactly right. So you would feel like such a fucking asshole. So maybe even though, like, as the if you were doing the crunching the numbers on the cards, you don't do that. When you price in the feel bads, it's probably worth it. You're probably right. Bringing for five will have vice again. That's such a good value. It's just amazing how much better vice decks are when they draw a vice on the play. Like if you could guarantee a vice on the play, in with vice decks, they just become the best decks. You know, oh, even Sinko here, it's, it's not doing. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be six damage from Love Eyes again. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, we played a card. What? Okay. That's a card. Maybe he's doing it just to get under the vices. I don't know. I mean, Greg is playing Time Twister, I guess that, but... He doesn't really care much, right? Like He's just drawing whatever seven he can. And part of the Time Twister is to draw his opponent back up to seven. So okay. Does, does Greg, Greg not have another land here? In that case, it's bad news. It looks like it from his. You might see our sure. first chaos orb flip on this scrubland. Yeah. Uh, what? Okay. okay. Yeah, he's gonna flip. Um, flip onto his opponent's scrubland. I'm sure. Yep. Got it. All right. So he's oh. trying to fight fire with fire in the land destruction game. Yeah. Yeah, when you don't have another land, I think you have to do that. I agree. Slow the game one. down. No, we have the crypt. That's true. We have the crypt, right? He does not take one. But if uh, he doesn't have another land, like it is certainly possible. Okay, it wasn't, but that Thomas did not have a second black source, or I guess like a third. So, in that Either way, case, when you're when you're man and you have the vice out, you have to you have to make that play. No answer. I am just gonna pass through some type. Okay. Sitting on an island is certainly not optimal. This, this is not yeah. yeah. Like again, look at how sweeney this is. First turn vice plus dib, and he's just like in a huge at a huge disadvantage right now. Yeah. Well, I mean it did miss. And pass the turn. And drop. And face the sword and disenchant, but right, right. No, of course. I mean, Thomas. I mean, he's he's playing spells to you know stop his opponent. He drew some of them, of course. But it's just funny. Again, this is another example of how swingy these games are. Yeah. This one looks. I mean, if Thomas can land a threat here, although I guess the threat is very likely if he plays it on turn four to be a juggernaut, which is quite boltable. I mean, Greg's, well, Greg's at a disadvantage, but he's not out. I'm going to Say again? Greg needs red mana to bolt it anyway. Right, right. So we had a mox. This feels like a 4 4. Take advantage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mana drain into Time Twister or Brain Geyser or something, maybe? No. This could be a quick one. Okay, side blast. That's He's right. gonna have side blast here. Doing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to let him swords in response. Although I guess now that he's seen the Serendib, he probably won't be swordsing his own creatures like that. But. Oh, no. Tap one card. 
All right, so they're both, I think they're both down to around three cards. Another four, four. So this, is, this is the power of, of Psy Blast and these burn lists, right? Like traditionally X fours against burn are so good. And Psy Blast just cleans up, cleans that all up just so incredibly well and goes to the dome when you need it. Step one, step one of every comeback, casting Astral Recall. Drawing that red mana and actually doing something helped as well. Yeah. Now he has a full grip, a land drop. Who knows what he could do at this point? Nice Arabian Mountain in play. Double bolt to send gear feels gross, but yeah. Uh, I think a chain main. Is he at 12? So he's at 9 now? What's, what's he at? 10? 10. Yeah, you're right. So end of turn bolt. Next turn, yeah, he's just going to race at this point. Hopefully, he doesn't have a, another spirit link for that. Shouldn't be at nine. Wasn't he at 12 before? I thought he was, but maybe we had it wrong. It's possible because we're just looking at dice. He didn't have a bolt there. Okay. Happening here. Do I have you at fourteen? Yeah, fourteen. Um, let's see. Uh, three. Um, one, two, one of the volcano. He's probably got fireball for four. Then gear. I guess you have. I guess you have to do it here. Like on the sun gear. You have to, right? You're just doing. Time, right? By you more times, you can draw more burn spells on that, I guess. Exactly. Just, on yeah, nine, it would just fireball for four into fireball for five. But... Right. If you if he were at nine, you're right. That's uh, that could easily be one. He's considering so that, it. I wonder if he is, and he's hoping maybe to draw. Like it, it felt like he has a clunky hand of fireballs. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what he's thinking. He's like, if I draw a Mox or a Soul Ring or something here, he's dead next turn. Exactly, and also any bolts works. Right, a bolt chain, even side blast gets you the one extra damage. So true. Any literally any zero cost artifact or Soul Ring or one of his like nine burn spells. That's, that's like sixteen out. Yeah, Vice. Okay. So it's 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 just side blast. Oh wow! I don't know. I feel like I I get greedy. Like it felt like he had a fireball that he's shuffling back in. Let's let's say that he did. Do you, do you fireball the send gear and then do all the shenanigans next turn? Probably right. Fireball face and then then go for twist the next turn. You just need to fireball fireball for face and then play play vice. Twister with a land drop and have a very good chance of killing him. Yeah, sure. But we don't know. Again, we don't know at all. Yeah, I'm kind of conservative with casting casting draw summons. I try to do do it at the latest possible. I think and I, I might be too conservative in that. Yeah, especially against. I mean, he has hymns, right? Like the last two cards in his hand were Time Twister and something, and he and that's what happened last game. He got um he got his wheel. Mind twisted again, not his fault, but hmm. Okay, we're back. Somebody just popped in the room. Sorry, guys. So, this game is going to be all about this twister the twister lottery. Yeah, like twister is such a, an example of a card, right? Like, it's it's clearly just about the best card in Greg's deck. Yet Thomas isn't even playing it, you know. He's playing blue spells, and it's just one of those cards that is just so swingy and so good in some decks, and so on, so borderline unplayable, and at the same time overplayed in a lot of decks. A lot of clunky decks just shouldn't be playing Time Twister, and yet do because it's Time Twister. Then again, I believe I'm in the camp of the deck should play Time Twister, and many people don't think so. Yeah, but that's a little bit different because you have all the fast mana. And you have no, super cheap no. removal. That's a Sylvan. That is not really what he wanted here. Not at all. Hopefully that vice. If he has no instance here, 
The vice oh, is going to do work. Ancestral? Oh man, the vice could do all the work. He's going to gain. Uh, he's got a disenchant. He his, must his, have a disenchant. Right. With him. Yeah, yeah. So, ancestral into disenchant. Yep, the perfect. Oh, the fact that Greg is uh, tapped out here. Sure, he's going to take. What? Okay, yeah, sure. I guess it's but like, imagine a spirit link here. I sort of I hope we're going to spirit link of the singer because that's just a sweet thing to have. I think we are. It's a sweet thing, and it's actually it sounds awesome. sweet and janky, but it's a real thing against burn decks. Putting spirit link on an X four is a real like, strategy. General spirit link. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is putting it on your your opponent's surrender most of the time, just watching him die to it instead. Like you right. get the chip damage, <laughs> them get it because it's so important against all these burn decks. But it's certainly now to do it. I mean, usually not on a singer, but on a Sarah instead. But I love Spirit Link. It's, it's sort of like a little kid card that has turned out to be really good in the meta game. I mean, uh, when I first started playing, Spirit Link was a high, was like a fifty dollar highly sought after card. It was a weird rare Legends card. Nobody had them. The one guy in my town had Isn't Spirit Link. Uncommon? Is that rare? What's that? Is that it's uncommon. rare? It's not uncommon. Oh, it's uncommon. It's definitely not rare. Okay. Oh, it's um, rare. It's still... rare. You mean, as in rare and not rare. Okay, sure. It was still relatively rare in 1994 or whatever, you know? Um, and I remember, like, the like one of the best players in, in Syracuse, you know, in those early days, he had a, his deck was Juzams and Spirit Links, and I was just in awe of that deck. I'm like, oh, my God. And maybe simply because of him, I kind of... All these years later, I still probably overrate Spirit Link just because it was one of the most awe-inspiring cards that I saw back in my formative days. Is that the same thing, like the same story about Control Magic and you? No, Control Magic. I just um, I found I just fell in love with on my own. It wasn't like somebody impressed me with it. Okay, demonic Tutor here. What are we gonna see? Okay, yeah, this is a good one. Spirit Link for Time Walk. Who does he play? What's Greg at? Fourteen. I mean, it could be Time Walk, but he's not playing it, so... <laughs> yeah, with Library and Time... Like, if he goes Land, Draw Card, Attack for Four, Time Walk, that's probably the play. Um, yeah, oh, given he's not playing it, and he already played his Ancestral, and his unless he has Lotus, Mind Twist doesn't do very much here. And even if he does have Lotus, he still has a Sylvan Library, as you, as you pointed out a million times. I think Spirit Link might really be the card. Let's hope so. I really hope it. Demonic Tutor for Spirit Link is even sweeter than a than a naked drawn Spirit Link, right? So tap it. Tap that city. Just tap it. Diamond, Diamond Valley. Valley. Okay, isn't sweet. That, Similarly sweet. Wait, isn't that just a worse Spirit Link here? I mean, sure, yeah. it can do it. But... It is, right? Because you, you get the four life no matter what, and you force him to kill the creature. Like, you force him to kill the creature. Oh, yeah. Maybe he has a Spirit Link as well. Why from this? Uh, yeah, this game, this this is, I mean, I guess Greg still has a full hand, and you never know. He could just literally go bolt, 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 you're dead. But Di or I guess Diamond Valley gets him up to 13. Attack with both, have Diamond Valley up. But interesting thing here, too, is is time is Diamond Valley um, timing, right? Because at some point, if he goes, if he goes bolt, bolt, and he doesn't Valley, then... Um, you know, he can wait and try and time a bowl, you know, at a different time. Uh, while, or if he has an extra bowl to back it up. If he has a a card now, things could happen. Like, he's playing power. Right, a million things could happen. He could bolt, bolt, wheel, time, bolt, wheel, time walk, untap, you know, whatever the heck he wants. Yeah. Because now... Uh, Thomas is down to one mana untapped, so he won't get be able to get disenchant before getting a vice trigger, for example. Right. If anything happens. Okay. We're also sort of nearing the end of the round, I think. So if if Greg wins what this you? one, it's are we just picking intricate and awesome games randomly, or are they going slower than usual because they're on stream and maybe nervous? 
I'm not like sure. When people don't play tier one aggro decks, this is the format. Yeah, I guess that's true. A dib is not really the best thing here. It's really not what he wanted, unless he also has a time walk. True, time walk would be something. Cyblast. Face, I guess. Yeah, face for sure. It has to be face. Your vampire is, it might be about to get its first counter. Or? It's entirely possible that that's that that um Serendib is chumping a send gear here. Not really. Not, not, not if that happens. What does he do here? I think I think he We still don't know where the um side blast went, do we? I don't think it has resolved yet. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I don't understand anything here. Okay. That's not, that's this is strange, but okay. What? I, I I think I could see otherwise just cyber's face. Like you block you, you take the four from the from the Sengir and you block the factory with the with the dib in case you attack with that, otherwise it doesn't. And then you get in one attack with the dib and just getting in one attack is so huge here. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it's just like it's a free bolt. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a little weird. I, I wonder if maybe it's maybe we're missing something. Yeah, is it possible we're missing something? Because that seems like a pretty pretty easy sacrifice send gear to Diamond Valley. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the of the tutor, right? I don't understand anything, but okay. Welcome to old this, school. Everybody. Is this like the danger of cool things? Because Di Diamond Valley is cooler than Spirit Link, or could it be the case that Greg somehow boarded out his Spirit Links? That, no, there's no way he boards out his Spirit Links. Tutor for Surf Production Red. Yeah, but he had no mana, and he has all these, you know, Psy blasts and and various other other non-red sources. Yeah, on tap. On I think we saw him. Lit yeah. It's also come off library at this point. I have mana with another, okay, another singer, but I don't understand this at all. Okay. Yeah, when does the round end? Let's check that out. It ends at 20 past, but they start a little bit late. So, so I think we have like five minutes or something. So they only have about 10 minutes left in the round. And this game will finish, but if Greg pulls it out, she easily could now because he still has a full grip. I guess. Thomas is at synthetically 13, although you never know, because he should be at synthetically 17. True. Let's see. Again, and like you said, you know, Greg's fully powered. All the moxes, all the blue cards, regrowth, wheel, everything. You just, you let, you never know with these kinds of decks. Anything can happen at this point. Could, or I guess channel doesn't do much here but i mean i guess it does get him it gets him three mana or whatever a two to get four it gets him gets him two extra mana it's like a dark ritual here hmm. if, he, if he can kill him this turn i'm sure greg has a ton of lines right now you know i mean valley is such an interesting card as you said like Hey Joel, what up? What up? Drop out what of up? here, man. We're on the stream. <laughs> you're messing up. You're messing up the. Uh... There you go. I think we should make a note of that, um, guys. If you're watching, if you're watching the stream or whatever, and in the tournament, and you know where the feature match room is, please don't go to the room, because all the windows are lined up in a certain way for streaming, and when somebody else jumps in, it messes up all the logistics. Okay. We can lock the room. What happened? Yeah, but then we have to let all these, all these, um, all the players in every round. I think we have to. We literally yeah. just went. This is Dave. He's allowed in. I think you're good. Yeah, yeah. We're um. Okay, so. Okay. 
Greg is attacking him here into the. Greg is attacking into the thing here. He didn't block. Oh, he didn't block, and now we're and now we're playing wheel. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. This is this is an actual free seven damage. I feel like Greg has gotten right. Yeah. Isn't isn't send your isn't the whole point of send your Diamond Valley to block this, and then when he bolts it at the end, you 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 um sack it to the valley, and that's that. You know what I want to see here? Want to see the one of Stormseeker? Same. You can Stormseeker bolt, and that would be enough to win through Valley here. True. Unless he has a Swords. That gets him one less card in his hand. Swords out by King? No. Swords out by... Yeah. Interesting. Oh, oh my god! It's happening! It's happening. So he has to sack. He goes up to ten. And then the bolt is left off. Right. Do it. Come on. Oh, we got it. The dream scenario. Lord Seeker doing the Lord's work. Oh. I'm going to tell these guys to hurry up, okay? We need, yeah, right. Do that. Yep. I can see how much extra time we actually have. I don't know. Guys, Greg and, um, and Thomas, if you guys can hear me, I think you can. You have like seven or eight minutes for this last game all right so if you want to double time it whatever you guys want to do up to you but i'm just letting you know you do not have a lot of time okay you guys hear me give me a thumbs up if you hear me okay got it um so that was freaking awesome exactly it was exactly how i was hoping that game would end you called it perfectly we're doing a pretty good job calling like one outers and stuff so far or like or like low probability plays on this stream I think this might be the first time ever I've seen Stormseeker actively be good. Shut up. It's done some things. I know um, Jonas Stattin played Stormseeker in his Rug Aggro deck when he won BSK with it a couple of years back. And then in the finals, it was almost as good as a bolt. I, I think it did. Actually, three damage for four mana once. Four mana? But it was green. Did it get around cop red? Probably not. <laughs> it would have if he had a cop red. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, I, mean, like it's a no, it's, I mean, you can't say it's overrated because very few people play it. I think I even probably overrated it for a while. Like I've, it's, it's sort of come to the place where I start decks with four Stormseekers, and then I, and then I slowly enchant, Enchantress them down to two, one, and then zero Stormseekers over time. But Greg actually probably did the same, but just Enchantress it down to one. Right. Keep the one just for the spice yeah, factor. Yeah. yeah. Sure. For those of guys, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Enchantressing means whenever you build an Enchantress deck, you always start with four Enchantress decks and little by little realize maybe they're not so great. And then you go to three and then you go to two and then you go to one. Then you go to zero, and then you end up putting a bunch of swords and jam day tomes and counter spells in your deck and, and whatever, and you're just off enchantress. But all decks start with four enchantresses and end with zero. Although not in this tournament. I've seen a couple of actual enchantress decks. What's what's happening? Mulligan, so it like Thomas, Thomas Mulligan. Mulligan. And did Greg Mulligan F? Oh, Thomas is on the play. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So I don't think Thomas has much of a chance here, right? He's not going to be able to win in in five minutes. Let's see how much time we'll actually give them. Maybe he's a good orb flipper. Now, so to a twenty size. So we're going to give them four minutes, right? Okay. But yeah, he um, I think this is a free roll for Greg. He's the only one who could randomly just go, like a factory. Like Vice here is insane, right? Oh, it's not a vice. Right. You, fact, know, fact. Right. you can play a lot of magic in five minutes if you play fast. You can. Vine offering chaos orb when you're tapped out is fucking enormous. Yep. 21. Dib. Dib would be good. Dib All right. Indeed.
So he's got a lot of heavy colored spells in his deck. He can't cast any hymns or any sinkholes right now. He could Thomas. play the Spirit Link. He could play the Spirit Link. Most of it now, right. Most of swords. Yeah. So we didn't leave really any up there, I guess. I mean, he would probably board in links if he didn't have them before, right? Oh, because he he's in a yeah, right. For game three, he almost certainly boards in the extra yeah, link. He has time to do it, basically, moving the cards around and doesn't think it's better not to. But, uh, did. Okay. Sure. I thought for a second there we were going to get channel fireball, although it doesn't do it because he's taken, he's taken too much damage. But that yeah. was pretty damn close. Well, there was all the fireballs on the pre-stream yesterday, at least. You saw that one? No, I didn't watch a lot of the stream yesterday. My daughter had a softball game, so I missed a, a huge chunk of it. Right, yeah, I only watched the 7-Eleven part. That's so sweet. I love that format. Okay, Dib getting in here. And left Tormos Crypt. That's an actual blank. It's always good for Greg to see. Right. It does get him under vice, at least, but he doesn't have a vice, thankfully. So he successfully is playing. Successfully playing around Tormod's Crypt by not drawing Black Vice. That's true. Okay, we see the Stormseeker. I'm happy about that. Ritual into a Sengir, I guess. Okay. That's, that's all right, because Sengir doesn't block Dib anyway. Right. It says it right on but, the card. He's, he probably has just, you know, Psy Blast anyway. He, he always well, has a What I want to see is... The rack. I want to see the rack deal damage here. It's probably not in the deck anymore, but I would like to see the rack. Okay, sub last. Well, yep. the interesting that. thing is that if it didn't do that, well, maybe it doesn't have the extra lamb, does it? Okay, it doesn't. Like, just these two factories raise the dibs so well. I know, I know. The city of Rack is going gonna, is gonna to change the math a little bit, but you've got to put them on like a bolt or something, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. He's good at those draw sevens. He does know. draw. He has played. He he drew both in game one. He got one mind twisted away. He drew one in game two. He drew another one three. So he's drawn four draw sevens over three games. That's pretty yeah. impressive and pretty important. We have like one minute left or something, but yeah, I'm gonna. I guess I'll go in the room and tell them one minute. It's I tell them time now? now, actually. Yeah, I'll tell them now. Um, okay, it's time now. Okay, someone says it's time now, so let's guys, let's point that out now. Hey guys, you're on you're on time. Okay, so start start your extra turns right now. Okay. Thomas guys, got it. Okay, so Thomas is turn one, I guess, or where? Yeah. Thomas is Thomas, will be turn. turn one. Thomas, you'll be turn one. All right, I'm gonna mute myself again. Yep. So, but somehow, Greg has gotten him down to is that nine again? He's down at nine again. No. Ancestral. Maybe it is nine. Right, because he hasn't taken. He's he's attacked with that dib two or three times. Okay. He did no other damage. I don't know, but Greg with that ancestral, Greg has a real shot at winning this game at this point. If only that Tormos crypt were clear link. I mean, he doesn't have he does have five mana here and a full hand, so I'm if smelling he still has a hand. Do you smell channel fire? I smell it. No. I smell a handful of bolts, which will end this. Lotus. Okay, Lotus. That's a, he's clearly been mana trap. Lotus is is pretty big right here. Yeah, but still, like, um, I think I'm going to... need something like a star collection red. Mind twist, maybe. What with mind twist is that it probably like the mind twist and a removal spell for the dip. Right. Spirit link. Something. I mean, and how it's just funny. This is a this this match has been a showcase for Spirit Link, although we haven't seen it in play yet. But at all times, he wants to draw it. He wants to draw it every single time. Okay, is that a him? That's a him. He puts it. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can sacrifice a scrubland as well, play the hymn, that's a little bit awkward. Like, using your the mana to cast a hymn here? Uh, okay, we'll do one until... 
I mean, I think he just doesn't want to tap his city if he doesn't have to, right? He's doing. He I'm sure he's going to use the no, rest of it. I know. I know. I'm just saying that if that is the best thing I can do against seven cards, it doesn't feel like he's in a well, very good spot here. But he just him have... twice, so he got he got a synthetic mind twist via two hands here. Okay. Okay. But he needs like. He's still not in great shape. He can't block that dib. He needs to have something. I guess he can attack for two. I mean, you attack for two or three here. I don't think you want to trade he damage never, here. Just yeah, attack for sure. two. He, yeah. He's never doing the damage. He's always like his plan is to draw and then win. Right. I guess he just, he just can't win. He can't win the game at this point. He can only draw. There's, there's no way. Like that turn was, he would have to do something there. Play guy here, then attack, then attack, but no. So this right, attack so does 13. not. This attack is really bad actually because that means he can't disenchant in case there's a time twister, and right. right. And we've we've seen Greg really be Greg is so good at drawing time twisters. Really like, I also really like Greg having the die in play, signaling what turn it is, so yeah, we yeah. know they are on the correct turn and so on. I really like his. I think that bolt. might just be it. Bolt, bolt chain. Maybe not, but then like, still has one more turn to draw it or get in with a dip again. Then why Seems would you play like the it... bolt? No. Yeah. Sorry. No uh, reason yeah. to play the bolt, right? That's true. Well, he doesn't know. Comes his deck. Could be like blow blast, for example. Right. No. Right. Sure. Sure. Be pretty unlikely at this point, but that is something to play around. It doesn't, it's not, you're not giving up a lot. That bolt is obviously going to your head no matter what. So, oh, this, so we're digging, we're in desperation mode here. With the white man instead of a factory, yeah, that feels um, that feels a little okay, weird. Anyway, but... So, this next turn is, is Greg's last turn to win. But, the Looks like that. Oh, he ripped Time Twister. <laughs> Again, not necessary, but he ripped Time okay. Twister. Oh. So Greg pulls one out in the eleventh hour. Can jump in and say something to, to them now if you want, right? Yeah, you want it. You want to do it. You want to jump in? I mean, we, we can just say congrats and whatever. Okay, fine. You you take the lead. Jump in. I'm I'll, I'll, I'll mute myself too, but. Mm. Oh, because I did. I had a problem with this echo last time. So you do it. Sorry, I have the same, so I can't really do that. Um, so I'm gonna try. I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna try my headphones. Hold on. Yeah, the same shit. Um, okay. Hey, boarding. Boarding in the dip. Yeah, boarding in Spirit Link. Divine offering. I mean, the, the round is already five minutes past over, so there's not a lot to chat about. No, uh, we're we're gonna let them go. I think. I'll just uh, I'm just gonna tell them that. Guys, awesome round. We don't have time to chat, but that was a really sweet ending for game two. And I know that, um, that Thomas, you were behind the eight ball in, in the third game because you really, it's hard for you to win in five minutes and Greg can. Um, but that was a hell of a match. You guys played some awesome cards. The Diamond Valley was sweet as hell. And good luck going forward. Okay, guys? Thank you. Thanks for showing us. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, guys.